again, everyone. Well, uh, good afternoon. Uh, today and uh, over uh, last night, uh, we have witnessed unacceptable violent behaviour, particularly in the Gold Coast area. And the message is, enough is enough. Uh, we have seen this behaviour come to a, um, a highlight in the actions, uh, particularly over the last couple of days. And this particular violence, as I previously said, those perpetrating this type of violence had two choices early this year, to change their behaviour or they'd go to jail. Now these people who want to drink, bring violence, drugs and guns onto the streets of Queensland and particularly in the Gold Coast area have no more choices. They, they have no more choices in relation to their behaviour and I've now directed the Commissioner to use whatever resources he has available or whatever he needs to bring this type of antisocial behaviour, violence, crim criminal activity in relation to gun guns and drugs to a conclusion in relation to violence on the Gold Coast. I have also uh, today asked the Commissioner as to uh, what resources he needs in that particular area and we are going through uh, those, uh, those issues as we speak. Earlier this year, we made a commitment to um, facilitate over 100 officers over the next four years to the Gold Coast. We have actually delivered 137 police officers in the last 12 months. We have ensured that the police helicopter is permanently stationed at the Gold Coast. We have made changes to legislation and ensuring we have the toughest firearm laws in the whole of Australia with mandatory sentencing ranging from one year to supply and trafficking up to five years. The Attorney General has also implemented unexplained wealth provisions and he'll talk about uh, them and other measures shortly. We have also said that we'll increase the number of police across the state by 1,100. We've increased the task force on the Gold Coast from Task Force Vanguard with 10 uh, highly regarded detectives, Task Force Hydra and also Major Crime Task Force. These task forces, as well as the other resources and other uh, uh, actions by the Commissioner, will send a clear message to these people, enough is enough. So from now on, police will be knocking in their door. Police will be stopping them on the sides of the road and pulling them out of their vehicles and stopping their bikes. Police will now be ensuring that they will not be able to, uh, to bring pain and suffering to the streets of the Gold Coast and police will also be pulling uh, people who ex exhibit violent behaviour or have anything to do with drugs or guns and ripping them from their restaurants and their hidey holes in the Gold Coast area. There is no choices, there is no uh, options, the message is clear, the Commissioner has been directed to immediately respond uh, as well as uh, make sure that he has a hard and a zero tolerance towards this type of behaviour. Also, we have said that uh, we will ensure that uh, the Gold Coast community, that people will be able to work, play and enjoy their safety the same as every other Queenslander already does. The Gold Coast is a great place and we want to make sure that the community, as well as our most important hard-working police officers, can go about their duty and their task in a safe environment also. So we'll be doing whatever it takes to bring uh, the, uh, the full force of the law to their doors, to their uh, happy times, to ensure that uh, they no longer feel safe in their beds or in their, their restaurant seats or on their bikes or in their cars. Commissioner, if you'd like to say a few words. No, thank you, Minister, and good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Certainly, uh, last night's events of the Gold Coast uh, would indicate that there are those still who think that they are above the law of this state and that is unacceptable. The Minister has, as he has said today, directed me to take whatever actions necessary to ensure that these people are brought before the courts but at the same time that we uh, deal with those people in a way which will show them that that type of uh, behaviour is just no longer acceptable in this state, not just in the Gold Coast but right across the state. Uh, certainly. Uh, any person who is intent on violence against another in this state will be, by, will be targeted even more heavily uh, from this point on than has previously been. And to do that, um, the government has promised to support 
for the Queensland Police Service, uh, whether it's money for overtime or whether it's extra officers, uh, certainly they have provided that, that assurance that we will have the, the uh, material and the people to do the job. Uh, in the near term, what that means is as of right this afternoon, we will have extra police on the Gold Coast from the southeast area. Um, we will do that tonight and we will ramp that up over the coming days. Um, and ultimately, it is my hope that we will be able to establish uh, a hub policing facility on the coast where we have a standing task force, intelligence led to deal with any criminal behaviour, but particularly antisocial and violent crime uh, in that area. And hopefully, uh, as has been my vision since becoming the Commissioner, we can roll out those types of facilities and teams right across the state. Commissioner, some uh, people might say crime's out of control on the Gold Coast, and, and, and what's your response to that? I don't, uh, I don't believe it is, and I have full confidence in the management of the police uh, on the Gold Coast, and I, as I have full confidence in all police officers on the Gold Coast. But there are times, and last night was a, a classic example, where out of the blue, uh, you get a group of people intent on uh, committing crime and being violent, uh, intimidating not only the general public, but intimidating the police of this state. That is unacceptable, and we will go after those people hard from this point. Uh, but just before we go, I don't have any questions, but just going to make some uh, just underlying statements first. But just to, elude, just to finish that one off, in the last 12 months, from the operations we've already put in place, over 724 charges have been laid against individuals uh, in relation, sorry, 724 individuals relating to outlaw motorcycle gangs and violent behaviour uh, have been charged with over 1,000 offences. So police have been doing great work and they continue to do great work. What we are doing is removing that line in the sand and sending a clean message, you either behave or you be gone from the streets of the Gold Coast. So, Attorney General. Thank you, Minister. Thank you, Commissioner. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Ladies and gentlemen, what we've seen over the last uh, 24 hours at the Gold Coast and other parts of Queensland uh, is uh, concerning. Uh, the Police Minister, the Commissioner and I have all spoken to the Premier this morning, and I can assure you the Premier is just as concerned, and that's why we're going to take the stand we are today. Uh, today is the day that we are saying enough's enough. Today is the day the government is drawing a line in the sand and saying to uh, outlaw motorcycle gangs, and those uh, engaged in criminal enterprise in Queensland, uh, you have had your day uh, and no longer in Queensland. The government will give the support necessary to the police to ensure they can do their job effectively. Uh, but it's important to say in the last 18 months, some of the toughest provisions in the nation have been implemented by this government. We have the toughest unexplained wealth laws that have just two weeks ago in fact started. Uh, we haven't had anyone before the court at the moment. But when the bikies and the outlaw motorcycle gangs and those engaged in criminal activity uh, will be, uh, have the full force of those unexplained wealth laws, they will know what's hidden. We've always said we have to go after the Mr. Bigs of the criminal underworld and the organisations. The unexplained wealth laws, the drug trafficking, serious drug trafficking declarations are all attempted to stop the Mr. Bigs and follow the money trail. When someone, the police or the CMC, has now a reasonable suspicion that someone is engaged in criminal activity uh, and uh, they have to uh, then make an application to the Supreme Court. The person then has the onus to explain where they got the wealth from. If they can't explain where they derive their wealth from, then every asset that person owns will be confiscated by the state and those convicted of drug, serious drug trafficking as well. We've also introduced, as the Honourable Police Minister said, the toughest gun laws in the nation with respect to a mandatory minimum sentence of one year imprisonment if you're found to have an illegal firearm in your possession in the car. We've doubled, doubled the penalty uh, for uh, some serious crimes. We've also in, uh, introduced a mandatory non-parole period, uh, a new offence of murdering a police officer in this state of 25 years. That's just the start. And what we're saying today, drawing this line in the sand saying enough's enough, this government will look at and do whatever is necessary uh, to respond to those engaged in criminal enterprise in the state. Uh, only three weeks ago, I met with the Solicitor General, Walter Sofronoff, and we are devising a plan, an innovative strategy to look at other jurisdictions of how we can tackle the uh, unlawful and uh, organised crime issues at, uh, across the state. And bearing in mind, it's just off the Gold Coast. Uh, we have elements of this across Queensland, so it's not just uh, attacking this issue at the Gold Coast, it's southeast Queensland and beyond. We're looking at
particular laws that the United States have introduced, uh, racketeering laws, which they call RICO, R-I-C-O. Uh, they uh, have severe punishments and penalties for a series of uh, things like robbery or unlawful assaults and things like that. Uh, we're looking at those legislation. We're looking at what New South Wales have done with respect to uh, banning of colours from uh, the nightclub district. We're looking at laws with respect to uh, banning uh, through the control orders with the Criminal Organisation Act, control orders with respect to what the criminal organisations can in fact own. Because we know that the criminal organisations uh, filter their money, they siphon their money all around the world. And I congratulate the police on doing the work they've done. We've, had a, we've got one particular matter before the court under the Criminal Organisation Act, which we ought not talk too much about because it's still before the court. Uh, but these are the sorts of tough measures that the government will introduce. But the message is clear. If we've got to do more, we will. And we're certainly saying today, enough's enough. We're drawing a line in the sand uh, and we'll do all the laws necessary to protect Queenslanders. issues, not just right, not just in the Gold Coast, but right across the, the, the state in relation to all, law and order. We set about bringing out forward the toughest laws, but making sure that police had the resources. We conducted the review and the Commissioner brought in the whole review of the Queensland Police Service and now the Kilty Review. We have had an, 20 years of neglect in relation to having laws in place and as, you know, as, as, as also not having the resources in place to match community expectations in relation to law and order. So what did we do? We said that we'd bring in 1,100 police officers. Just even for the Gold Coast alone, we made a commitment for 100 officers over four years. We actually completed that and put 137 officers into that region in a 12 month period. So it's not just about police officers, it's about ensuring that uh, they have the resources as well. We brought forward the government wireless network, a half a billion dollars in network technology that actually allows emergency services and police to talk together. What we'll be starting up, and the Commissioner will go into that shortly, is the highlighting of the mobile data for the first time in Queensland, which will put police and emergency services ahead of the illegal and criminal elements in Queensland. So what that will do, will add extra time for those officers on the street. We've made sure that we brought forward the police helicopter. Remember the previous government said that they'd never have a helicopter. We've made sure that we've had a, a new, a one helicopter on the Gold Coast and we'll be bringing the next helicopter next year. That's an $18 million commitment. There's been 20 years of neglect. In the last 12 months, just in relation to outlaw motorcycle gangs operations, from what we've put down there in relation to uh, the, the three task force that have been on the ground, 724 individuals have been charged with over a thousand offences and that is about police getting out there. Today we have seen obviously, uh, well overnight we have witnessed uh, a, a series of uh, violent acts and that when we've said previously that they had choices, well today there is no choices. Police will be making sure that criminal activity on the Gold Coast, that these criminals will no longer sleep safely in their bed or have the peace of mind to think that they can go out willy-nilly bringing violence or drugs onto the streets of the Gold Coast. Police will be knocking down their door. Police will be ripping them out of restaurants and they'll be making sure that they intercept their whatever type of vehicle they are on the road. And I make no apologies for that. And that's why today I've directed the Commissioner to take the hard stance and an immediate stance in relation to this type of criminal activity. We've already engaged with the Gold Coast City Council previously. We've engaged with community members. We've also made sure that uh, you know, we've had a, a, a long-term and a short-term response. This action that we announced today will be ongoing until the community and the government can visibly see a reduction in, in the type of serious crime involving particularly drugs and, and, uh, and guns. Necessarily, but uh, I don't necessarily agree with your assessment of that, but we'll be prepared for any contingency. Um, certainly part of this, and I'm very grateful to the government, 
uh, basically saying that the resources that we need will now be made available. And that means uh, extra people down the coast and certainly that greater vision of getting more police out from behind desks on the street where people want to see them, the community want to see that. That's what, we, uh, that's what I have promised to deliver. Uh, that was why we restructured the organisation earlier this year and that's why now the Kilty Review is building on that restructure. We've also introduced the borderless policing approach, what you would have seen in, in Logan just recently, as well as down the Gold Coast. So whilst we're addressing the, the immediate response and what has happened overnight, what we are also addressing is the medium and long term response. And that's why we've always had the long term strategies and the Attorney General here with the introduction of, uh, of laws that has already started uh, to have work on, but we'll continue to bring them forward to ensure that uh, police uh, have obviously the laws, but also the laws that meet community expectation. Commissioner? The problem with putting police officers out on the street seems to be that they're also up for attack. Commissioner, what other sort of protection are you seeking from the government? And uh, if you wouldn't mind making some comments on the uh, case that we saw recently with the officer shot in the face, have you been speaking with him? Yeah. Uh, what message have you had with Rick's chairman? Just, just prior to that, obviously, we identified that right in the first instance when we came to government. We increased the penalties for a serious assault on a police officer from seven years to 14 years. They were actually opposed by the opposition. The Attorney General has just stated that we've brought in mandatory sentences in relation to the death of a police officer. Now, an assault or a death of a police officer is an, is an assault on the community. And that reflects the community expectations to ensure that we have serious penalties. From a, a government side, from me as Minister, I have said that I'd look at the assault police uh, regulations over the next 12 months, see how those expectations are being met during the judicial system, and then I would look at uh, further types of even mandatory sentencing, not just for police, but right across the board for emergency service workers and other particular individuals in community who experience uh, serious violence attacks. But for day to day, Tishy, come, Premier. No, thank you. Thanks, Commissioner. No, thank you, Minister. Um, certainly, uh, if I can take the last question first, uh, Sergeant Gar Gary Hamray is in good spirits. I spoke to him last night. Uh, he's a wonderful officer. I've known him probably all his career, as I've known his brother, who is also a police officer, and I've also spoken to his son, Aaron, uh, to assure them that they have our full support. These are very difficult times for police officers when they're involved in this type of violent event. Um, there is nothing that I can do personally to stop the fate of a serious offence like that occurring somewhere in Queensland. Uh, this time it occurred on the, on the Gold Coast. We can train our police, we can equip them, we can provide extra police out there. But occasionally, and that is a sad reality of policing, that uh, police put themselves at risk for the benefit of the community. And that's exactly what Gary did that night uh, and other officers. And I've also spoken to the officer who was with him uh, at the time. Uh, they go out to do their job to keep our community safe. And unfortunately, uh, there are those times where fate uh, deals a very uh, a deadly hand. Thankfully and gratefully, uh, on this occasion, uh, our officer is safe and he'll come through uh, virtually without any uh, physical aftermath from it. But uh, what the government has made clear to me, we now have the wherewithal to go and put police out there in numbers to show any criminal that they are not safe wherever they are, that if they're intent on committing violence, they will be dealt with lawfully, but firmly by the Queensland Police Service. The, the other point, the other, can I just make a point with, with, with the question you made before about, uh, you know, why, why now? Now, this government's been in for 18 months. We have done more in the law and order sphere and having the toughest penalties in the country in the last 18 months than the former Labor government did in 20 years. They had 20 years to sort these issues out, and they didn't. Every week in Parliament, we've got tough new measures going through. This is really a further extension of the tough measures we've had in the last 18 months. And there is not a day that goes by where I don't pick up uh, some form of media outlet and see that the civil libertarians are attacking this government on our law reforms of being too tough. Well, we are unapologetic. We're unapologetic because we're on the side of Queenslanders. And these new laws that we're looking at announcing today in terms of the, uh, the other elements we're going to be putting on uh, criminals and their organisations, uh, using the unexplained wealth laws, the Criminal Organisation Act, it's really an extension of the laws that we've passed in the last 18 months. So it's a continuation of the government's crackdown on uh, these sorts of uh, criminal activities and enterprise in the state.
Minister, how much money are you prepared to spend on these new measures? Look, uh, that's what we've, we've taken up with the, uh, the Commissioner. Currently, uh, we have got uh, policing uh, on the streets uh, as, as we speak. Uh, we've got a number of task forces. Uh, we've had uh, other task forces uh, available, uh, whether it be in Cairns and Townsville already. But uh, it is all part of the overall review that the Commissioner implemented in relation to borderless policing. Uh, one of the main aspects, and I'll get the Commissioner to comment in relation to that, is a hub and spoke model for policing, ensuring that we have a uh, major task force uh, at any given time to, uh, to deal with issues not just on the Gold Coast but uh, right across South East Queensland and that's the type of thing we're working for. The Commissioner obviously will be getting back with to me in relation to uh, any form of commitment and I have made the commitment and as well as the Premier has made the commitment that uh, we will assist police officers uh, in uh, whatever they need to ensure that uh, the criminal elements on the Gold Coast, but right across Queensland, uh, simply know, know right now that uh, there is no choices, that they uh, have to change their behaviour. But is there any limit for, uh, for the amount that you're prepared to spend on, on these new measures? Well, uh, that's what, what I'll be discussing with the, uh, the Commissioner uh, over the rest of today, as I have uh, this morning, to ensure that uh, we have the best possible resources in place. We already have the best police force in the whole of Australia. We have the most highly skilled police officers in the whole of Australia. We have one of the most highly regarded commissioners. But uh, what we have said is, as a government, is that uh, we firmly stand with our police officers to ensure their safety uh, on the streets who are protecting our most vulnerable citizens when people try to bring violence. So we will ensure that uh, police have whatever resources they need to tackle not just the Gold Coast issue, but the whole of the state in relation to issues that may arise from time to time. When you look at uh, the overall uh, uh, changes that the Queensland Police Service has already gone through now, uh, you've got to bear in mind that uh, uh, we have become, we have, you know, have become and are becoming a very, uh, uh, a very professional service in relation to uh, how we go about our activities. When you think of the IT side of it, you know, uh, police now will have uh, greater IT than any other state. In some ways, we've actually leapfrogged the last 15 years in relation to technology. And that's why we've got a commissioner with great standing who is completely a fay in that uh, area to, uh, to bring forward those changes. And that will help police on the street. It won't just help police, it'll help communities as well. The My Police blogs that we released only six months ago are now recording over 16 million hits. It's another way of engaging the community. I've gone and spoke to other leaders down the Gold Coast, and it's not just a Gold Coast issue, it is right around across the many regions of the state, is how communities engage with each other. It is the fear of crime, and the fear of crime, the, the, the work that the media does is remarkable. It is fantastic how it is able to, uh, to be able to get the message out. I must compliment them for all across the whole state for the great work they do. But we've got to make sure that we, we obviously work in with the police and the community and we're going to do that. Commissioner? When we're talking about the Gold Coast tonight, yeah. how many extra officers are going down tonight and over the coming days? Uh, there's at least 10 crews, general crews that will be there, but that's uh, general crews. There are a range of other support mechanisms and I'm not going to specifically no. identify numbers or who. Uh, but this will ramp up over the coming week uh, and my intention is to have a full task force within a week on the coast. Um, obviously, it's no good us just jumping, uh, jumping the gun and putting police out there without a specific target. We will be targeting specific types of crimes and criminals. And what about protecting the police officers on the um, body armour, strong, are you looking forward to speeding that up? We're always looking at different ways of, of uh, making the job safer for our police. And on that note, I'd, I'd mention the, uh, the technology that the Minister launched only uh, a month or so ago uh, giving our police access to our major operating systems so that they can be talking to a person at the same time uh, through a, a, uh, an iPad or a, or a tablet of some sort or their smartphone technology, being able to look at a photo of that person uh, on our records to decide whether they're talking to someone who's wanted, who's got um, flags against them or alarms, alerts against them for violence, um, to make their job safer. And that's what technology is just an enabler doesn't do the police work, but it makes it safer for our officers and quicker. But what about just the basic equipment? You know, technology is one thing, but you know, body armor is a very different issue. Well, it, 
depends what sort of body armor you're talking about. I mean, there is, a, there is an issue here in terms of our, our interaction with the community. The Gold Coast is an inherently safe environment. There are specific incidents that occur, like last night, that need specific responses. Um, our job is to make sure that we've got the right people in the right place to deal with those. Um, and we will attempt, attempt to do that by putting the extra resources in initially, and then it will be a much more targeted approach. But key to that is what the Minister has directed me to do, and that is to target these criminals where they live, where they work. And that's what we'll be doing. Yeah. Any other questions? Um, sort of um, um, did you um, uh, underestimate the scale of the problem and, and the level of resources that you needed on the Gold Coast? Oh, look, most certainly not. Uh, we, even before, I had 20 years in the police before getting into politics, and uh, you could certainly see, not, not just in the Gold Coast, but right around the state, and, for me, as a minister, the great opportunity to actually be in a portfolio to bring a great deal of practicality to actually on the ground policing and working with the commissioner is, uh, is uh, you know, is, is a great uh, opportunity. And because of that, uh, that's why uh, first up we said I had the opportunity to 1,100 new police. When you think of the Gold Coast, we said we'd deliver 100 police in four years. We actually delivered 137 across the region within the first 12 months. And that's what we're saying. It's not just a, uh, it's not just a, a man, uh, you know, a body number uh, uh, response. It's about a whole collective response to make sure we target those individuals, the violent people, the drugs, and the guns. And that's what we're doing. Okay. Thanks, everybody. Appreciate it. Uh, while we're getting some cutaways, would you like to just ask some specifics about last night? So it was Bandidos and another group. Can you explain who's the other group? Uh, certainly, the uh, the main. Uh, people involved with banditos. We, we are very much aware of that and obviously uh, we have a uh, process in place to follow up on all of those. What the, probably the most concerning uh, aspect of that was the fact that they were prepared to wear their colours uh, in, in open view, uh, in a public place, but then to follow up by going to the police station, to Southport Watch House, to try and protest the fact that members of the club had been arrested and certainly further arrests were made at the, uh, at the watch house as a result of that. Um, we we will thanks, not, police will not be intimidated by these people. They will do their job. Yeah. Did you thanks, John. Did the police responded racially? I'm sorry, your question? Did, did police know that the bikies were there the, last night? They did we found out very, very quickly yeah. that, that the, uh, the bikies had turned up there, yes. Is it true or not? Is it true or not? Um, I haven't I, I haven't heard of that assessment, uh, but certainly um, I'll be checking with my people. Obviously, there's a range of things happening today operationally to deal with uh, this. Yeah. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you very much. Thank you.